How are you doing YouTube? Nick Patap here from Next Gen Rehabilitation and today I'm going to be talking to you about statins and their effect on cholesterol as well as side effects that they may be causing. So first of all let's start off with what a statin is. So a statin is a medication that's used to treat individuals that display high cholesterol. Um, so specifically they're going to be prescribed to individuals who are dyslipidemic or produce higher amounts of cholesterol than normal. Um, and this population usually resides with having risk factors for having cardiovascular disease or do have cardiovascular disease. So when it comes to lipids, um, there's a couple different categories that we like talking about. Um, there's the good cholesterol, the bad cholesterol, um, and the triglycerides. So whenever you go into your doctor's office or you're talking to your case manager, exercise specialist, they're going to want to have some blood work done, um, especially if you're a heart patient. So, or if you display the risk factors. So what we're looking for when we have these cholesterol profiles done is A, um, what's the person's good cholesterol look like? Usually for individuals that have heart disease, um, we like keeping that number below a two. Uh, for HDL or the, or the good cholesterol, we want these numbers to be um, above one for men, above uh, 1.03 for women. And for triglycerides, which is, the body storage of fats when we break them down we want to have these numbers below about 1.7 um, all these numbers i just gave you are in millimoles so the reason that we want these numbers in this category range is so that you don't have as much plaque buildup in your arteries so the bad cholesterols the ldl cholesterol um, there's a huge chain reaction that goes on but long story short what happens is when you have certain you know breakdown of arteries or if you have high levels of uh, LDL floating around in the body, these collect in, in the arteries. So not only in the heart arteries, they can collect in arteries in the legs, uh, in the limbs. and But primarily if we're talking about the heart, if, it's, if plaque starts collecting in the heart, that's when we start decreasing blood flow into the, into the heart itself. And that's when we start getting these symptoms of angina, you know, chest tightness. Um, you might be experiencing more physical symptoms, shortness of breath, dizziness. Um, so that's why... We want to keep the LDL cholesterol levels low. At the same time, we also want to keep the triglyceride levels low. If we let the amount of fats, free fats, um, flow, flowing around in the body get too high, um, this can further convert into you know cholesterols and, and plaque formation building up as well. So how do we increase these fats, these bad fats, these triglycerides? Well, LDL we actually get from a few different sources so the the sm smaller percentage i'd say about 20 to 25 percent comes from what we eat our animal products so you know fats coming from uh beef liver things like that and the other 80 to 100 or 80 to 85 percent come from uh our liver our liver actually produces cholesterol now ldl cholesterol we can't live without zero percent of it we need a little bit of cholesterol in our body to you know do certain metabolic functions um, they line the outer edges of our cells they help um, transport different things around our, our, our bloodstream so it is essential that we have a little bit of a lipid in our body but we don't want these high amounts with our triglycerides if we let these numbers get too high same thing happens um, if you ingest high fat meals and you're not expending the energy with exercise this triglyceride number gets a lot higher and that's when we run into the risk of having issues such as plaque buildup. So what can we do to lower these levels? Um, first of all, to increase HDL levels, the best and simplest way to do that is to exercise. So the purpose of having higher HDL cholesterol is A, to take the bad cholesterol in the blood and transport it back into the liver to be recycled. That's what HDL cholesterol does. So the higher our HDL cholesterol, the better it's going to be for regulating the, the, the LDL and, and decreasing its numbers in the body. Um, two, how do we lower the LDL cholesterol and tri uh, triglycerides? So one good way of lowering the LDL is um, weight loss. So we see anywhere from 5 to 7% reduction in, in, uh, in LDL cholesterol with weight loss. Um, plant sterile, so eating you know, uh, vegetables, seeds, um, nuts, things like that can help decrease our cholesterol by anywhere from 6 to 15%, all right? So these are a couple factors that we want to be um, looking into. Again, the exercising is going to help regulate metabolism, help decrease these, these uh, levels of cholesterol and triglycerides in the body as well. Um, <clears throat> another, <clears throat> excuse me, another 
factor that I want to get into is how do stands come into play? So those th three examples I explained there help lower cholesterol um, fatty acids in a specific way, but stands are shown to reduce cholesterol by, you know, 30 up to 50%. So doctors are going to prescribe this just because they regulate the cholesterol levels even better. Now, the problem with the statins is there's a big side effect, which is um, causes muscle pain or myalgias. And basically what happens here is there's a chemical process that occurs in the body that causes um, elevated levels of CK, uh, cytokinase, uh, creatine kinase, rather, which elevated levels of this show that there's some damage going on in the muscle. So some people can take a stand, no problem. Some people will take a stand and, oh, bunch of muscle pain, aches, things like that um, start happening. Now in our clinic um, and in my practice, what we end up doing is if an individual is uh, presenting themselves with these symptoms of muscle pain, things like that after taking the stand for a couple weeks, um, we'll put them on what's known as a uh, stand holiday. So um, after consulting with the doctor, we'll either A, decrease their dosage of stand that they're taking or um, remove the stand. Um, and kind of see what happens from there. Now, if we find that either with removing the statin or by decreasing its dosage, um, it's able to decrease cholesterol or decrease muscle pain rather, um, we're gonna go ahead and, and do um, uh, update in the prescription. So we don't necessarily wanna take the individual off the cholesterol medication altogether because what happens is this individual needs the, the cholesterol medication, again, to help regulate cholesterol in the body. So if we take them off completely, this cholesterol potential has the, has, an, uh, has the potential to increase again. So what we'll do rather is either A, prescribe them a different form of cholesterol. So there's a bunch of different cholesterols out there. You might have heard of them, Ruvastatin, Torvastatin, um, generic names, Lipitor, Crestor, um, talking about Zocor, Simvastatin. So these all have varying degrees of strength. Um, so if one, you know, feels a little bit too potent, we might either A, decrease its dosage, or B, give you a lighter version of the cholesterol medication. So these are good things to talk to uh, with your doctor about. I mean, if you are getting these these uh, pains um, with your standard medication and you know what, it's affecting your day-to-day -day life, you definitely have to sit down with your exercise specialist, with your cardiologist and let them know, hey, you know what, this medication I feel um, might be giving me some side effects. Is there something we can do about it to, you know, get a new type of medication, have a new dosage, and then uh, take it from there. So hopefully you got what you needed from this video. Um, I'm going to be putting more videos out there. And again, um, if this is something you're interested in, please like it, share it. If you know someone that would benefit this, please uh, share it to them. And if there's any other topics that you'd want me to cover or talk about, uh, feel free to leave a, leave a message in the comment section or send me a message and I can hopefully do a chat on that as well. Now remember, we never want to be totally messing around with our medications on our own. You should never stop taking medications um, unless you've consulted with your doctor. So if this by no means is, okay, Stan's giving me muscle pain, I'm going to stop taking it. No. It's just something to keep in mind that if it is giving you some situ issues with uh, muscle pain, to consult with your doctor, um, chat with them or your pharmacist and see uh, what actions can be taken to, uh, to help your situation out. My name is Nick Patap from Next Gen Rehabilitation. Until next time, have a good day.